Hey everyone, this is the Neo Turbo Maniac here. Happy New Year. And I'm back with another review, and this time we're going to cover Cross Swords for the Neo Geo. Cross Swords is a 50 megabit cartridge that was developed by Alpha Denshi and was released back in 1991. This is a hack and slash action RPG in which you have to save the kingdom of Belkana from the devil Nausis, who has kidnapped the princess. Cross Swords is presented in a sort of first person perspective which your character is shown in a wireframe similar to Punch-Out. When you start the game you'll have a choice between the first three chapters. Starting at a later chapter will start you off with more gold and hit points but of course the game will be more difficult. Let's get into the controls for this game. Using your joystick will move your character to the left and right and up and down will perform a high block or low block. Button A is used to attack Button B is used for magic, and if you press buttons A and B together, along with the joystick, you'll perform a variety of special attacks, all of which will deplete a portion of your health. You'll come across an assortment of enemies, each with their own methods of attack, and when you defeat them, they'll drop off items such as health restoration, orbs that will restore your magic, and gold, which you'll need to purchase items. When you complete a section of a stage, you'll gain experience points, and when you gain enough of them, you'll raise a level in which your maximum hit points will increase. Now the strategy for defeating the enemies in this game is defend first then attack. So you have to watch for the animation of the enemy to know what kind of attack they'll perform and then use your shield to block or you can use the joystick to dodge. The weaker enemies it teach you to dodge and the stronger enemies you just have to really watch out for. Also, using the special attacks does come in handy for the really stronger enemies. For example, you'll unleash a uh, magic orb that will push back the enemy. You'll also have another one that will unleash a whirlwind attack which can cause a great amount of damage. And this definitely comes in handy late in the game. And it really doesn't deplete uh, that much of your health. But you gotta watch out though, some of the stronger enemies can block it. So you have to pick and choose when to use it. In addition to the special attacks, you'll have an assortment of magic attacks based off the weapon that you have. You'll start off with the fireball attack. If you upgrade to the mist sword, you'll unleash a mist attack which will stun the enemy which will allow you to attack them continuously. And if you upgrade to the shield axe, you'll get a shield barrier that will protect you from attacks. This will definitely come in handy for the stronger enemies and you'll also get lots of uses for it. In order to upgrade weapons, you have to call the merchant, and the merchant will appear in between stages. You'll have usually three weapons to choose from, each with its price, and also meet to restore your health, so take advantage of the merchants, never pass it down. Also along the way, you'll have people that will come up to you and upgrade your shield, so that comes automatically throughout the game. The enemies in this game come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. For example, you'll fight aquatic creatures such as fishmen or frogmen which will spew out various projectiles and also come at you with weapon-based attacks. You'll also come across your standard fare of goblins and skeletons which will wield weapons such as swords and clubs at you. You'll also encounter flying creatures such as wasps which will try to sting you so you have to make use of the shield. You also come across giant worms that will breathe fire at you which will require use of your shield as well. The game will also take you through various terrain, typical what you would find in a fantasy RPG setting, for example forests, dungeons, mountains. You also have a stage that takes place on a ship. You also have lava pits as well. You also come across very large creatures such as giant crabs, also really giant soldiers as well, so you have a great mix of enemies in this game. They do repeat themselves, but considering this game came out in 1991, we'll let it slide. Also, what's a Neo Geo game without split paths? And Cross Sword offers that. In certain areas, you'll have a choice in, 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 to go in one direction or the other, and in, depending on the direction that you go, you might have to fight different types of enemies. Uh, sometimes you might have to go through an area where you might have easier enemies, and sometimes it might be more difficult. For example, here, one way I will fight the rat creatures, which are pretty easy to handle, but if I choose the other direction, I'll fight the night creatures, and also a fishman, which are much tougher to kill, so you gotta choose wisely. Cross Swords was one of those games that took me a while to get the hang of, but once I got used to it, I really enjoyed the game. I like the presentation of this game, and I'm a big fan of role-playing games, and I like this unique first-person slash third-person perspective. 
And I like how they took the basic elements of role-playing games such as hit points, experience points, magic, upgrading your weapons, and they were able to incorporate it into an arcade game. I like that there is variety in the combat, it's not just simply slash and defend. You have an assortment of special attacks and magic attacks based on the weapon that you have and their strategy involved as to when to use them. The graphics for this game are, are they're fairly solid, uh, nothing that really stands out for its time. The music, same thing, good music but nothing that stands out. You do have good variety in the enemies in this game with their own unique attack patterns, though they do get repetitive, but then again, games from this era, they all did that, so that's no big deal. I also like how they don't really stiff you on recovering your health or your magic, so you always have ample opportunity to, to, to recover your health, so the game does, does not end so quickly. Now, drawback for this game is that it is very long, considering this is an arcade game, and depending on how many times you continue, it might take you probably around an hour and a half to complete this game, and if you're playing this on the home system, you have to have a memory card, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now this game was never released on any other platform, so you have to go the emulation route to play this game if you don't own the Neo Geo system. So it's a good game, so I'm going to give this three and a half stars, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.